Thank you for joining another segment of Movie Lingo. I'm Eddie Lingo, and with this next piece that you're going to get is going to, unfortunately, I have to apologize due to technical difficulties, you'll be thrown into the middle of the conversation for uh, San Andreas with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Um, just so you know, going in, it deals with the massive earthquake, the biggest that we've ever seen, that rocks San Andreas from the west coast all the way to the east coast, and The Rock basically has to go off script to save his estranged wife and his daughter in San Francisco. Um, on the panel, you're going to have uh, Cody Flutie, uh, David from Phil Can, you're going to have uh, Old, Snap, Old Snap Cupcake, and you're also going to have Nate, um, including myself. Um, please enjoy what's left of the conversation. In the future, we will make sure that we take care of things so we won't have this again issue again, but we hope you do uh, continue to stick with us and enjoy the conversation. Again, this is Movie Lingo with the San Andreas conversation, and I'm Eddie Lingo, and I hope you enjoy it. Does anybody else want to talk about the acting? <laughs> let's talk about. Let's. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. Let's how about it? Okay. Rough. Let's let's talk about the acting yeah. because he did mention that the acting was horrible to him. What, what were your thoughts on that? I mean, yeah. I guess if you think about it, the acting was not great, but I wasn't even thinking about it. Didn't I, in my opinion, if you weren't thinking about it, then it wasn't. Yeah. Bad. I mean, it was. It fit. It fit the genre. The Rock is likable. He, you know, he can. He can. Act. I mean, he's become like the modern day. Action hero. Yeah. He can. He definitely can act better than Schwarzenegger. Yeah, he's, he's evolved. So he can do series, and that's fine. And it was okay. I mean, he was fine. Uh, Spy Kids mom. Who's acting Disney? Like? Spy Kids mom. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Carla Gugino. Um. I, okay. How, how is it? Is it Gugino? Yeah, it's Talon. Yeah. Well, for me, I always say Gugino. Oh, I don't okay. know if it's Gugino or I say Gugino or Gugino or Gugino. Like this. I guess Gugino. Spy Kids mom I is fine. Google that's what I say all the Google time. Google sent it to me. Showed me a YouTube video of somebody. Actually saying it. Gucci. Okay, so and I, I don't know if that's accurate. That's still somebody else just telling me their version of Did it. Did anyone else also like very much appreciate their uh, his comment as they parachuted into the stadium when he was like, oh, "It's been a while since I got you to second base." <laughs> yeah, I, I <laughs> really liked that. Oh, that, that was the like one-liners. Yeah. yeah. No. I, if I had to not like somebody's acting in the movie, I guess it would be the the guy that they're with, that British guy. who's kind of annoying. Oh yeah. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, just he's there yeah. just to have he's, maybe like a little, a little sexual little tension, and they always have to have a kid. That's fine. I yeah, 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 I loved the kid. kid. I thought the kid was pretty good. The kid, yeah. the Fantastic kid. Four guy is another weird name. Ian Guffer. He has a strange name. Mr. Fantastic. He was okay. He was just this 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 the snarky rich boyfriend that they kill him off. Spoiler alert. So I love how quick. he died. The way he died. The was tsunami phenomenal. came. Just yeah. the cargo crate just. Wham! Right on top of him. Oh, that's perfect. That was the point. You knew that was coming. You really. knew that was coming. They set him up because he has that death. He's like, yeah. That was the point we didn't get to finish earlier, though, um, when we were talking um, about him. You know, when, for me, when he first left her, he was in shock. I kind of was like, okay, because he didn't seem like a dick in the beginning. He was. He seemed super nice, and she was trying to like, I'm not trying to step in for your dad. And she was like, all right, cool, and everything seemed all right. And then I thought he was in shock, and I was like, this is bad. He's walking away. But then he truly, just out of nowhere, shows his asshole colors when he sees the, the dust cloud coming and grabs the guy, yeah, he just throws, throws him, throws him yeah, in the way, and takes over. I'm like, okay, now. She was pretty stuck. I mean, he tried his best. Yeah, he, he The rock could go in there and just do whatever, but she was crushed in the limo, right? It was a car. It, it was crushed, the car. and her legs were, her knees were pinned. Yeah. And I also thought the, the, the British guy actually was pretty genius in the way he... Oh, with the oh, he used the jack. He used the jack tires to carry the tires to yeah. lower. And I thought it was, I thought it was actually... I mean, yeah, the yeah. character, I mean, it was a smart idea, but I mean... I, he didn't he, annoy you at all, the British guy? He annoyed me at the moment where he did not ag agree with what route, they, what they should do next. And then the little brother had to tell like, dude, she she's already got us this far. She knew about the landlines. Yeah. She was like, oh, yeah. why else? The kid why, was, yeah, the kid why was would the we audience. trust her? And yeah. I was sitting there like, yeah, dude, seriously. Somebody gets you that far and knows that much. I'm just gonna be like, you know what? Whatever you want to do. They took all, all. I mean, the whole, they took the cliches of every disaster movie, but even recent ones like um, their relationship with the Rock and the wife, and, and, and that kind of felt like Twister. Remember? Yes. Where they were divorced and he was gonna get the divorce paper. Even get the papers in the opening yeah. scene. It's like, oh, I'm divorce papers, of course. And the right. divorce papers always look so awesome. You know what I mean? They, they always look, look like they look perfect. Yeah, I'm gonna get divorced. No, they <laughs> look like a wedding invitation. These papers, I'm gonna these divorce papers. Yeah. Are so you know, you know they're gonna get back together. And I think they threw in the dead kid thing yeah. because they're so likable together. They're like, why didn't it work? Oh, the dead, dead kid. The dead you throw kid in a dead family member in any movie. It's, awesome. it's like, oh, okay, I get it. Okay, fine. Then the whole part with the daughter. I love how you refer to that. The dead, dead kid thing. thing. They have the daughter saying, oh, my dad's going to rescue me. That was like uh, uh, day after tomorrow. Jake Gyllenhaal is like, my dad's going to rescue me and no one, no one listens to him. 
Because they, they, they want to get frozen. Yeah. Okay, they did that. I mean, it was every cookie cutter. The whole movie was just... Sorry. It started off quick, which yeah. is good. Yeah. yeah. LA earthquake. The biggest earthquake ever. And then you know it's going to keep going. Yeah. The, it's following the cracks. So it's mini earthquakes and then the big final earthquake, which is what? 9.7? They uh, should have just made it 10. Yeah, okay. I, know. I You know his character I really liked? Paul Giamatti. Oh, yeah. He was really good in this movie. Like, like, yeah, he's really good. He, he, he did a great job of, like... First of all, that scene where his partner throws the kid as he's falling, I was like, that. Were they lovers? I, I, I have a, I have a feeling that they might have been, but it's not like strong enough it's, to be like, yes. Yeah. Right, it, it seemed like, because he, he, I mean, I would be emotional if I lost my friend. But the picture that they had showed them together. But I mean, they, was, they had been working together for like years. True, like, true. True. They weren't just like colleagues for like a couple years. Like they, they made it sound like they had such an intense history together. So like, it, it could have been like yeah, broke yeah. back mountain. And yeah, it could have been, but yeah. I just thought that maybe that was something they, that they were doing. But then maybe they pulled back on. I don't know. But Paul Giamatti, like he did a very good job of like he was generally like very concerned and trying to get everyone's attention about yeah, this, and no definitely. one was listening. And he didn't he didn't play that. Ah ha! I told you so, guy. Like he no. mentioned it. But he's like, no one listens to us until the ground starts shaking. But like, yeah. even though he knew he was right, and he knew that everyone was going to be like, we're sorry, why didn't we listen to you? He still, his first concern was, we need to get this out to the yeah. media, we need to let yeah. people know. And I, I really, I really like that. I okay. enjoyed his parts more than the rock parts, almost. Don't you dare say that. I didn't, I didn't like the, the like, whole thing? okay, because when the news of the earthquake hitting first got out, the rock got a phone call from his job, they're like, look, we need you to come in, you're a firefighter, help us save people. He comes in, takes a helicopter, bam, I'm gonna go get my wife, gonna go get my kids, screw everyone else. Like, he, he you wouldn't fire he's paid to go save people, no, not that's just love the but, rock. But you wouldn't go rogue if right, yeah, you could save your family I would, I right then and there? The same thing. Yeah, I know I would. If I, I know I gotta save people, but if somebody in my immediate family circle who I care about says, I need you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a detour real and quick. And remember, he was on the yeah. phone with her right when the earthquake started. Yeah. So he knew for sure she was in danger. It's like the moral obligation thing, like. Yeah, it sucks that he did abandon his job, but like if you're put in that situation, Listen. most people are gonna go for their yeah, family. There's not much he could have done. That earthquake is so yeah. the top. Wait, well, okay, I mean, that's not true. So but, but you know what's funny is that an earthquake is unpredictable. But there's a building <laughs> next to this building, building that's completely the, falling, and then the, the other building survivor. is not falling. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 It's just you know. Hey, Betty uh, Cupcake brought up a good point. The fact that she was the sole survivor of that well, building I mean, was a big Well, I mean, if you think about it, like I watched this movie with Alyssa one of our other movie lingo people. And um, if you think about it, if she and The Rock were married, like, and you know, he's told her the things that she needs to do right. in a disaster for her to escape. Like they've, right. they've had to have talked about yeah. that. Like I know she mentioned like, no, um, cause her dad is a firefighter and she knows like different types of how to put out fires. Like if, you, if you're, if a loved one is a, is a rescue emergency person, they're going to bestow that knowledge upon you. No, definitely. So it makes sense that Spy Kids mom was able to get out of... Uh, but somebody could have followed her. Well, yeah. No, I mean, not the, the, the Everybody was going tried, down. Was. Everybody was going down. Yeah. She's I like, mean, oh I my... Feel like he's, it could have been a couple of people tried. that could have yeah. at least, if not followed her or just happened to not but die. I think, I think that was almost like a sort of like commentary on like, you know, we, it, the mass will go in the yeah. direction that everyone's going. That well, is true. People clip. do do that. Like literally, like and she was like she was trying. There was a scene where she's climbing up the stairs. She's telling people like, no, we need to go up. We need to go up. And everyone was like, fuck We're that. Downstairs. We're right. going downstairs. And right. she's like, that's what's breaking is downstairs, guys. But no, I think that's a very. I think it was like obviously. I don't think San Andreas was a super big social commentary movie. Like, but I think that's a small version of where they were just like you know. When disaster strikes, the people, it's the blind leading the blind. Right? Oh, yeah, definitely. I agree with that wholeheartedly. That scene had a good, that, we're talking about effects, that scene was really good. The first earthquake scene. The buildings falling were really yeah. good. And they have the one shot that starts from outside, it's going through yeah. the buildings, yeah. and yeah. it goes through the window, and then it just follows her in one shot. Yeah. And everybody, it, it, it was like a cocktail party, right, or something? Yeah, some sort of something. Party. Some and it follows her all the way up to the roof. They use some of that in the trailer. I like that part when the camera turns to the right, and the swimming pool is going, pfft. Yeah. yeah, that, that was awesome. Good. That pool looked cool. I want to swim yeah. that pool. You know what I really liked, and I think Benny will appreciate this, Cupcake mm -hmm. will appreciate this. Uh, um, Who's Benny? The sister. The sister-in-law, or whatever she was going to be there. Her boyfriend's sister, who was being a bitch to her. Yeah. Susan. Another Susan. another Marvel uh, reference there. We had the Human Torch, Mr. Fantastic. Susan Storm was Mr. Fantastic's wife. 
Is that what this movie is? It's, it's, it's cool. really just a prequel to it's it? It's really just an advertisement for the new Fantastic Four movie. <laughs> and The <laughs> Rock is just a human thing. That's, that's it. Yeah, 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 actually. You know what? There's something to that. <laughs> but it, We've she, discovered. The way, the way she died, I thought it was great. Because I hated her from the jump. I wanted to stick a fork in her neck. The way she was acting. The way she was she being a bitch. Like, right, and so when she tried to help her, she took off running and she went after her. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, there's no way she made that. I was like, yes. Oh, on that whole side of the building? Yeah, yeah, she yeah, opened okay. the door. One thing it. I was talking about, um, I wanted to happen. They're driving the truck. Carla and The Rock are driving the truck, and they see that couple pass by. They're trying to warn them of the gap. Oh, uh-huh. uh, okay. Why didn't The Rock jump that gap in his truck? You think he would have made it? I definitely would have made it. Because the ramp. <laughs> there was no ramp. I know they could have used the, the top of the gas station as a ramp. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. I was that, I, when we were watching that, I was, that was like, I was like oh my god, they're going to jump the gap. They're going to jump the gap. And then, she, and then she's like, oh, where'd you get that hat, sir? And oh, they go to the, the plane. plane. I'm like, I thought that was cool. How is he able to fly that plane? You only fly helicopters? Oh, he's a... He's a no. Maybe, I maybe. Like, he's a Coast Guard. Coast Remember, he was, he was uh, a helicopter. I know what this is. I know going this is. to an airplane. I know what this is. He's How probably multi You're right. He's he like can't. Multi-train. Because he flies a helicopter, he's There's too no way to fly an airplane. Oh, you missed that scene when he says, oh, by the way, we're well, we digging your own is. plot holes here. I'm telling you, it, we don't know what his training is. Yeah, and then he, yeah. he, then he, then he drives the, the raft through buildings and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what's the best? His wife became a professional boat driver towards the end. Oh, crash the She downloaded it like the helicopter. You have to think about the fact that The Rock had military training before this movie. He had military training. Not her. Like, I'm talking yeah. about the plane. Okay, oh, driving a boat still, is not that difficult. It's literally a throttle. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know about it's that. Man. That's it. It's, I don't know. Have you I never drove, I I drove, drove boats boats I drove a boat that's it's 10 years old. It's not yeah, it's Going not through all that debris and able to back out and just gun it, yeah, there's it's no a, hesitation. It's a throttle it's, forward. It's literally a lever. Like, it, it's, it just, you push it forward and it goes forward. All right, so you mentioned the tsunami. Let's talk about the tsunami. Tsunami was incredibly 100% tsunami. unrealistic and would never but happen that way. So bad. But it looked so good. Like, <laughs> I would uh, Best tsunami disagree. to date. If they had put, do you guys, did you guys ever see the last Airbender movie? Yeah. I did not I stay not. more than 15 minutes in that movie. I okay. walked out. At the end, where it was supposed to be. Uh, like preparing the. To just stop? wait, just okay, wait. All right. They. Aang is supposed to be the avatar. I know this is a jump, but stay with me. Aang is supposed to be the master of all four elements, and when he goes into the avatar state, he has the ability to manipulate the elements to his bidding in any way, shape, or form. They had such shitty effects in that movie that if they had had this tsunami in that movie when he went into the avatar state, that movie would have instantly done more money. There were more visual effects in this movie that were good and then we're incredible. Then a movie about a guy who could literally like throw mountains and lift oceans. Yeah. But look at the time frame though. That was a while ago. Five years ago. Yeah, but still, I mean, technology is always increasing. Always Are you talking about the quality of the water? Oh yeah. Quality of the water. The the how, water is the hardest thing to do. Water they made and fire. It, like yeah, the scale. Have to, of it. Like, they have it to one up. So much more money to make an effect scaled bigger than that movie. Well, I want to get to the point where you said it was, it was unrealistic. What was unrealistic about it? Do you legitimately think that if you were in a tiny boat like? Spy Kids Mom and The Rock were in that you could actually drive it up that weight because it didn't break yet. That's yeah. the whole point. You have to get over it before it breaks. That's realistic. Yeah. That's but the theory. Also, I think that's I think the theory. The most you have to get over before it actually starts being the, th- the wave itself. That's why I think the most unrealistic part about it is when you have an earthquake, the tsunami doesn't happen where the earthquake is. It happens across the ocean. Okay, so that's the that's the non-realistic part. Okay, yeah. So the tsunami is going to happen. Oh, it would I, yeah, okay. yeah, so I, I legitimately the didn't way. know that they, you could actually make it over if you did if you got over before it broke. Yeah, it's a big hill. Yes. You can't. That's the way you saw Something it. about a boat climbing 90 degrees. It's Skyrim horse logic is exactly what it is. If you can walk up a mountain on a horse in Skyrim, you can go up a tsunami. There the you go. How about that? Did you guys notice that the, the massive destruction in the movie, they hardly show except for those scenes in the street with uh, Fantastic Four Dad. Uh, Fantastic Four Dad. Fantastic Four. The guy from Fantastic Four. They hardly show anybody really dying. In the yeah. yeah. They have the well, P13 like, violence. Except, except that, that, came in, like, that water bridge. Water huge. Yeah, that <laughs> bridge killed everyone. There was thousands of people on that bridge. That shot there. was the only shot I was like, whoa, that looked good. The cargo ship yeah. slices the bridge the, in the half bridge, like a sword. The bridge just, like, being destroyed was very oh, beautiful. Yeah. There was, Aesthetically. There was a, a brief like cut to a scene right after the bridge got cut in half where like there's a couple old people on the shore running away from the water. There's like a vertical wall of water moving at like two miles an hour towards them. I'm like... 
this water should be going much faster. I don't understand. Yeah, so I'm gonna go super fast. There I don't understand what's is, going on here. I don't know if you guys caught it, but I watched it again yeah. to see this. It was one of the funniest moments of this movie. There's a scene in San Andreas at the end where they're showing all the helicopters and all the relief. And Carla, whatever, says, what do we do now? And then it pans back out and then it zooms in to her and his face and right. he says, we rebuild. Yeah. If you look at her eyes, her one eye is cross-eyed. It's fucking hysterical. <laughs> She's looking and it's like this. <laughs> She's looking like this. Cause like, I was like, I was talking to Alyssa. I was like, did you see that? Did you see that? So I went back again and watched that ending scene and she's just standing there and you, it's not even She's subtle. looking at the camera, I don't remember. She's, she's looking at the at the rock, oh, like oh, a little maybe bit. Maybe they shot them separately. But yeah. like, yeah. her eyes are, it's not even like a subtle, yeah, like, check it out. it's yeah. very off. <laughs> oh, this is a big... It made me laugh so <laughs> much. It's gonna add so much revenue baby. to this movie. <laughs> it was like the ghost and three men and a baby. It was we're gonna be renting so it for that. fantastic. Uh, uh, I, I strongly recommend the next time you guys are in a movie theater, pop into the, cre uh, the ending scene of San Andreas and it's they they show them then they pan out and they show the rescue effect and then they pan back in and that's where you see it right before the credits start i'm gonna catch it i'm gonna catch it one quick thing about yeah. the wave. Like but toward the the wave comes toward the end of the movie yeah. and it looks like there's hardly anybody left in the city and then when they're leaving there's like thousands of boats going up that way yeah. i wondered wait, what the, where the fuck all these people everyone come from? in los angeles has a boat well i mean there are there are coastal cities it's not it's not like unlikely that there'd be that many boats but yeah, but they go from, I mean, they go from like nobody around to just everybody there. Yeah. I guess if that boats to flip I over. I thought, and the way I took it, and you know, I could be wrong, the way I took it, those people were already on their way out, and then for some reason the Rock's boat was just that fast. Took over. To catch up <laughs> to everybody. He actually attached like a booster engine onto that boat. And he caught up with everybody just, and got over it before it was the, all of them. The, the tank he drives in the second yeah. G.I. Joe. Oh, one, uh, one part I want to talk about about towards the end after the tsunami hit. When he's fa when the rock is faced with watching his daughter die and there's the glass in the way and like the rubble in front of the door, one thing I really didn't like is like, all right, you're like struggling to save your daughter's life. You wait until she's done drowning to like kick the stuff so out of the way. The, the, like I get an adrenaline rush, but like yeah. you're watching your daughter die. I wanted to see the rock to break the glass with his fist right there. Yeah, at least try once. Yeah, it probably wouldn't work in real. If it worked in Kingsman, why wouldn't it work with the rock? But yeah, he uh, he sh should have been able to move this stuff out of the way before his daughter had drowned. I thought that was a dumb way to add suspense. Yeah, we'll see. That. Here's, here's another point that uh, Chris actually brought up. Chris, our cameraman. Hi, Chris. Chris actually brought it up after we watched it, which he's could, powered by swag. Everyone. <laughs> it it could have worked well, um, and they would just have to come up with more drama after the fact. But early in the movie, when The Rock uh, stole the truck and the guy put the gun on him, he knocked him out and took the gun. And if he would have kept it on him, they could have easily. Shot that glass out and then found new ways to create drama after that. That's yeah. very true. You know, he accidentally shot his daughter. But what does he do now? But he didn't even keep, they didn't, never brought up the gun again. Ne I mean, of course, he may be one of those people that didn't need guns and like him. But I would have liked them to have like, yeah, established have shot that. that glass out. Right, but you never saw the gun again. You don't, you know, obviously he didn't have it on him. But they, they should have either showed him discard it or wrote it in that he used it, you know, and then found a new way to create more drama. Or emptied the clip in the guy he took it from, at least. Dude, that would have been awesome. Pop, pop, pop. So, that would have been awesome. Was Best space. movie ever. When he's bringing back the daughter. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if who's seen this movie. Remember The Abyss? Oh, yeah, yeah. They kind of, it was like the same kind of thing. The same kind of thing? Where he, he quits and you think she's dead. And yeah. And he's like, no! Yeah, that was... And, <laughs> and then that, that little piece of water comes out. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was like, turn her over. She's gonna choke on her in the hand. But yeah, whatever. He just wanted to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's yeah. For me, I, I felt like besides that moment, I knew she was gonna live. But I yeah. felt like prior to that, she was the, too pretty to not live. <laughs> prior to that, She's I think the, the director star, did a good job She's making of rise. making you wonder <laughs> if all of the main characters were gonna make it. You know, I for me, I was like, are they gonna, are they gonna do it? Are they gonna do it? They never did it. But I was wondering if. Somebody was gonna. I knew the door was gonna. If they killed it. off a main character besides Mr. Fantastic Four Dad, I feel like uh, he's not a dad in the movie. He's I feel like, like, I feel like the movie would have been better if they had just killed off one of the main characters. Yeah, like Armageddon. I was hoping for that. Yeah, because yeah, Poseidon remake. You automatically expect him to make it, yeah. even if it's a tight situation. And I thought I would have been like, we should have lost that. Shit. We should have lost that older British kid. They just <laughs> they kill off the Rock in the first helicopter scene. I you know you know the first city kill off the Rock that early. I was like, wow, like damn. I thought they were gonna. There's the scene in the city where um, um, Busty Betty and the two little British boys 
they, they, then earthquake starts and um, they all spread out into different directions and that's when the glass falls on older McBritish hunk. Oh yeah. I was, I was like, this, he, they, he's gonna die yeah, here. Yeah, he's gonna die here and his, uh, his younger brother is gonna get his dad girl. Lady. I was the kid is 10. Kid he kid. deserved it. He, 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 yeah, he, he, was, he was way he smoother than that, he kid, earned it. than that British dude. He earned it. He got the numbers too, actually. Yeah, he got the numbers, yeah, not, not the brother. Not the brother. How about that? Oh, yeah, exactly. well, yeah. that kid can't be, wait to be twenty when he's twenty, and then he'll they'll be getting. When he's twenty, she probably won't look that good. But you not know, her. Probably, there, will, there will be another one, and they'll probably make a sequel, and it'll probably be like San Andreas Two: The Return of Mr. Fantastic. Because <laughs> you know it's an island now. There's when they zoomed yeah, out. Yeah, that's it's an island. Off, so you know who knows? It may add layers to that. It might be a different. In a location, State, different location. Like uh, Olympus has fallen, now it's London has fallen. Oh, I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No. Nah. No, nah, I didn't know. Yeah, it's Big Ben exploding, London has fallen. Okay. This is like not called people. Washington DC. Spoiler well. alert. Anyway, it won't be San Andreas, it'll probably be now, uh, I don't know, it'll be probably in Hawaii. My cousin Brandon posted an article today that I didn't get to read, but the topic itself I thought should be a, a, a conversation piece. Abortion? Uh, no. Uh, Religion. No. Religious abortion. We're getting close. <laughs> Religious abortion via faults in the earth. Damn it. No. Oh, when we it. throw babies into the... Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the question was asking... Um, it showed a picture of, of Bradley Cooper from uh, uh, Aloha, and it showed The Rock, and it said, uh, what, what do you think is worse? Um, bad original movies? Or, I'm sorry, weak original movies? Or bad original movies? Or horrible sequels? And I thought that was an interesting point because, you know, Hollywood doesn't like taking risks with new things. And every now and then they try, but for the most part, they're trying to just remake everything and it's not doing everything justice. So what would you rather them Try new original movies and fail or keep trying to reboot stuff? I would rather have new original movies that suck. Yeah. Because yeah. that made that it's fresh. That, yeah, that gives me the idea that Hollywood is still trying. I have to agree with you now. Like lackluster sequels, not only is it like, wow, I wasted my time watching that, it's like, wow, they were also really Crystal Skull. great series. Crystal Skull, there you, you go. Yes, you always bring that up. What do you think? Because I hate it. I think original ideas are the best way to go, especially in Hollywood, because everything gets regurgitated. All of these reboots, they honestly kill the, they kill the industry, because you think automatically, oh, another fucking reboot. Right. The only one that hasn't disappointed recently is probably Mad Max. Mad Max. Uh, every other one, look at Poltergeist. Poltergeist is awful. Yeah. They released, I think, within uh, a week or two of one another. Yeah. Her prime example. We'll see how Jurassic World does. Right. I think Jurassic yeah, World will one. be a bit better. I really hope Jurassic World doesn't disappoint because I'm looking forward to that a lot. I don't think it's going to disappoint. We from go. the way that it looks and from, I really think, like, there are some, there are some series that shouldn't be rebooted. I don't think Jurassic Park is one of those. But is Jurassic Park really, I mean, it's... Quasi well, that's all I have to say, guys. <laughs> you should save that for that reboot discussion that we're going to have. Oh, okay. sure. Yeah. Can I wear my boots? You can wear your boots, and I'll wear mine as I say reboot on them. But yeah, no, I think I, think I would rather... I would rather, rather I would rather have Hollywood churning out terrible original movies with a couple of good gems in there yeah. than having them try to reboot things that I've seen that I like that I and don't... shitting all Yeah, over. exactly. Well, what do you think? Oh, I totally agree. The remakes... The remake... Reboot is just a fancy word for remake. Yeah. As we all noticed, David's uh, lackluster opinion towards Poltergeist. <laughs> I think reboot, I mean, reboot kind of is like when they did with the Hulk. Yeah. They kind of did it right away with right. Spider-Man, but remake's getting out of hand. I totally agree. All right, so one, one, one quick question I like to ask, and it's way off book, but even though you, you want more original, if you could reboot anything right now and have complete control, what would it be? You can reboot anything. Oh, that's a difficult question. Who wants to take it first? I have one idea, but I don't know where I would go with it. I just know that I would want to redo the Star Wars prequels. Really? Whoa! Well, I didn't think anybody would touch those. Mm -hmm. I would. I would like to redo them and not taint it. Um, the, I think a lot of the flack that we get from the Star Wars prequels is the generation gap between. The, the older fans coming back to see it and the new fans that caused it. Um, I think that there is a couple things that we could do without. I don't really need to name names, but Misa don't want to cause no trouble. Um, but I feel like there's something that could be redone there, but a classic series that I would want to see redone. Um, 
Did you guys ever watch Sphere? Yeah. Yeah. I fucking love that. I love that, that movie. movie. Yeah. And I would love to. It's not a series. No, no, but I would love to, to get be a series. Up, I'd love to get an updated, like a newer Sphere. Yeah. That's actually a good one. I haven't heard that, that movie since I was working with you. That was phenomenal. Anybody else want to take this question? Uh, I'm going to take two, like, basically freebies on this one. Okay. I want to redo the Spider Man movies. Okay. Under Marvel. Right. I just let that be. Yeah. I want to redo the terrible mistake. Which we talked about earlier, that is Avatar The Last Airbender, the movie. Oh, yeah. Yes. That movie took something beautiful, something sacred. Took it and shoved it up fucking Shyamalama Ding Dong's ass. <laughs> oh, my God. That movie was so bad. <laughs> uh, all right. I, 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 I do that close to the cartoon. Okay. No, I, I agree with that. I, I love the idea of Sphere. How about you, Cupcake? I would say... Maybe bring back Boondock Saints. Maybe not redo it, but actually give it a proper ending. So, um, you want to like, you don't want a sequel, so you would redo it still. I mean, essentially, because the first one, where it leaves off, and it goes into the second film, doesn't really feel the same. Okay, I got you. you know, I would like to have a fresh, a fresh, I guess, start, because the idea is so, so good. So, that's still reboot. Yeah, I guess you would say you, that. You would relaunch and re reintroduce and you, your own, you know, right. new spin. Would you close it off where there would not be a sequel? Is I that think that's the best way to go because, honestly, the way that the original is set up, the, the one actor that plays on The uh, Walking Dead, he became so popular, you can never expect a Boondock Saints 3. It's never going to happen. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Norman Norman Reedus. Norman Reedus. So Norman Reedus is so popular now. He's never going to He was also in Blade 2. I didn't see. Uh, I didn't see the, which one was. Blade Two. He was the guy. He was. Uh, was he Snipes' uh, gadget guy? The one that double crosses. Oh, they him. killed him, right? Yeah. 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 So, David. Oh, okay. Um, reboot. Which would it be? Besides redoing. Okay, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm not big on remakes, and a lot of the ones that I thought of in the past are kind of already being made. That's true. We talked about this like eight years ago. Back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I now used, all the stuff. Either they're cartoons that turn into movies. And the one that was just announced that I thought would make a good remake, so I don't know if that counts. They're, they're saying they're going to remake it. It hasn't come out yet. The Last Starfighter. I'm going more obscure. Okay, okay. The Last Starfighter. Yeah, that movie didn't do well. And it's like a cult hit. Yeah. It's not a, you know, you're not really shitting on anybody like Star Wars or, you know. And it, that idea still works now. Well, the upgrade, the upgrade of technology could definitely yeah. do it a lot of dust. It, yeah, exactly. Kind of like we did with Tron. Yeah. Gonna look, it's going to look way more cool. Yeah. And I kind of like the the story. It, you can modernize it, but I kind of like the arcade thing still. Yeah. That would be cool. Just have the like, you know, you can still have the same trailer park thing. There's an old video game there somewhere. Nice. He beats it and ends up, you know, just modernize all that. Yeah. And another one, really quick, because that technically already came out. One movie that I think, you know, Disney's remaking all their movies now. Mm -hmm. Two Disney movies, I think that remaking it would actually do well, actually make money. Aladdin. No, no, forget animated movies. I know this is going to make you laugh, but the, the Honey Shrunk, the kids, if they made that now, I think, I think no, it'll I'm make money. I'm surprised they haven't already. Imagine they looking at now, you know, with the Ant-Man style effects. Yeah. That would make money. And The Rocketeer. That oh, movie Rocketeer. Yes. 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 But I'm scared that it's too much like Iron Man now, because it's a flying suit. Yeah. That they would modernize it, and then it'd be, oh, this is like an Iron Man ripoff. They got to keep it in the 40s, but they then gotta, again, that's risky. Captain America, the first one didn't do that well because I think the fact that it was time. in the past turns off younger kids. It's possible, it's possible. You know, the what, mommy did once okay. I have the, the money to, to fund all of these uh, reboots, we'll, we'll sit down and we'll really dive Okay, cool. Sounds good. Right, so so that's your plan. A reboot yeah. special. All right, now I have a, a reboot that I would do uh, that nobody will, has ever heard of, but you can go research it because it's one of my guilty pleasures. Is one of the worst movies with the coolest idea. It's called Mean Guys. <laughs> So, look it up. I, I, I'm leaving it at that. Look it up. It is uh, it is one of those movies where you got a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of underground criminals that are called to meet in this abandoned prison. Uh, they think they're about to have some kind of big meeting, and they're really trapped to when they just you know kill whoever last man standing gets the million dollar or three million dollar briefcase, and then it's just an all out killers locked in with each other in prison, just going at it. And I just love the idea. Uh, so for me, I would do that and I would do it well. You know, it was it was a horrible movie, but I couldn't get past 
coolness of it. Yeah. But I bought it. That sounds interesting. Yeah, I bought it and they made fun of me. And no, we watched it. Remember the mustache scene? The mustache scene. Yeah. Yeah. It's fast. <laughs> it's like they cut and it's a different actor. You know, for they one put a shot. different mustache. It's totally Just, different. And then cuts back to the other actor. Great. <laughs> All right, so I want to thank you guys for joining us. Movie Lingo, we discuss San Andreas with The Rock. Um, we got uh, a, a lot of different opinions. I think you should definitely go see it and also check out all of the movies that we just mentioned as far as reboots. Let us know your thoughts, what you would reboot. Uh, you know, put your comments there. Uh, also, let us know what you thought of San Andreas, the acting, the plot holes, and let us know what you think about uh, Cupcake's bear skin. Okay. Yeah, we're all very eager to hear what you have to say about. We that. Have I'll have a physical one physical. for the next show, just so you guys can see how awesome it truly is. Yeah, it's just good. Uh, so, as you've noticed, we've had a couple of venue changes, but today, and probably for a while now, we're going to be shooting at a local comic book store called Past, Present, Future in Davie, Florida. They've got comics, they've got models, they've got statues, they've got trade paperbacks, cards, anything that you could basically dice, board games, anything. It's a great place, so we encourage you guys to check it out. Uh, the people working here are absolutely, totally friendly, they're great to talk to. If you don't know what you're into comic-wise, they're great to talk to. If you know what you're into, they're great to catch up on some new stuff. Uh, it's a great place, I would definitely recommend checking it out. Yes, so we're very thankful for them letting us shoot here, and we're gonna, we're gonna continue to pump this place up. We're gonna play yours. Ooh, ooh. Oh yeah, thanks again Movie Lingo and the guys for inviting me to uh, this panel. I didn't invite you. Uh, please check out FilmCampProductions.com or our YouTube channel FilmCampProductions.com. We do retro movie reviews, trailer mashes, podcasts. YouTube channel podcasts, YouTube, YouTube, yeah. YouTube slash FilmCampProductions.com. Because if they put FilmCampProductions.com in, the, in a browser, are they going to get you? Yeah, automatically. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? I actually have never used it. We paid it. off Google. That's how it's going to work. That's how it's going to work. Yeah. Yeah, so check it out. The retro reviews are pretty awesome. I'm waiting for you guys to do the uh, what's the one with the uh, Pony Boy, the Outsiders. The Outsiders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he laughs every time. Uh, I love that movie. But that would be like a 300 million dollar movie that's done now. Yeah. <laughs> I should redo that one. Yeah. With the CG factor. Sure they are. <laughs> So All right, guys. <laughs> that's, that's, that's so wrong. Wrong. Hey, they can do it. They can do it. <laughs> Young Jeff Bridges. Oh, I picture him digging him up right now. All right. <laughs> they got to get the. Well, I'm Cody Flutie. <laughs> yeah. So this is Movie Lingo. Thanks for watching. I'm Eddie Lingo. What's up, Cupcake? I'm David. I'm Nate. And we're all over the place. And this is Anarchy. Thanks. <laughs> See you. <ya. laughs>